This today is a background on open licenses, specifically for um, with information that might be helpful for your open life science projects. Disclaimer number one, I'm not a lawyer. Um, you'll hear that again during the talk. So I'm going to keep going if everything's okay. Audio, video. Okay, great. So I'm Christine Rogers. I see a, a few people who know me already on this call. So shout out to my Montreal uh, people like Kendra and Sam Gay's crew. I'm part of that open science uh, ecosystem based in Montreal. Personally, I'm at McGill University at the Montreal Neurological Institute, which is the largest academic open science research institute going. And specifically, I'm a data manager, research, research project officer, on a number of open science projects and initiatives because I work for the LORIS uh, databasing group. We make an open source uh, platform that's basically uh, data tools, databasing, data sharing um, for neuroscience research and it's also used in a lot of open science initiatives. So that's my context. Um, I've also been a part of the open life science cohort that started in January. I'm very happy to be back. And I focused in that um, phase on adoptability metrics and support for open source research software. I'm also involved in some of Google's open source programs in terms of mentoring for Google Summer of Code and Google Season of Docs this fall. And if anyone wants to connect on with me, you can reach me on Twitter. My handle is at the bottom of the slide and I will take it from there. So today we're talking about licensing. The purpose of the presentation um, for the context of the Open Life Science program is that licenses are going to allow you and anyone to use, remix, and share what you're doing on your project. The outcome of today and of the exercises you're going through today is that your project is going to be openly licensed for use, for remixing, and for sharing. Today we're doing a short presentation followed by discussion with some practical steps to help you work towards adding an open license to your work. Uh, the steps are really simple. The thinking behind it is worth taking a moment to go over. So that's the plan for today. Am I still good on the audio visual front? Okay, great. Uh, I just have to figure out what to click. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. So how does this fit into the open leadership framework? Let's start there. Uh, the context of the open leadership framework is that open leaders will design and build projects that empower others to collaborate within inclusive communities. And with licensing, when you think of licensing, you don't necessarily think of empowering, you think of restricting. Um, I think is in terms of everyone's experience with user licenses would be a really familiar example. For example, a lot of people know MATLAB in terms of the context that it's available free for use for academia. But if you're trying to use it in the context of company or privately, uh, suddenly the license costs a lot of money. So user licenses um, are one perspective. We're going to flip the script today because from your point of view as a creator of a project, you're looking to add a license to your project that's going to tell others what they're free to do with your work um, how they can share it, reproduce it, adapt it, and what their rights and obligations are in that respect. And that also gives you as the creator the protection of having um, those clearly in place, having that framework, uh, but at the same time being able to share what you've produced really openly once that is in place. So that's how licenses can be a powerful tool for sharing. And that's how they also fit into the grid for the open leadership framework under the category of build for sharing. Uh, licensing is something that really enables you to share your work uh, as you build out your project. Um, there's a few key aspects to licensing. Um, I'm not an expert. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not your lawyer. Um, but we're going to continue on this basis with a bit of background. For truly open licenses, um, I think they all have the common elements about use, modification, and sharing of software. So use is just who can use the work and for what purpose, whether it's commercial or research only. Modification, can the work be modified? Who can modify it? For what purpose? 
and then sharing. So if, if you make a modification to a work, um, can you share what you produce with other people and how, and can you redistribute the original also? Uh, there's a definition of open source down below, and I'm going to avoid the debate on what open source is and is not today and skip ahead to what you guys need to know about licensing. So under those three common elements of truly open licensing, the first part where it's important to pay attention to how this impacts you is attribution. So most open licenses will require others to credit the authors or copyright holders of the work. That's a pretty common thing that a lot of people are used to. Examples are with the Creative Commons BY license and almost all the other licenses. You need to attribute the work when you use it uh, to the original authors. This is really common if you use a photo, for example, you'll, you're going to want to credit the source. Um, there's also a type of license that says there's no attribution to be made, and that's a CC0 license which says that something is effectively in the public domain and is actually no copyright holder. So moving on from attribution, the next important thing is distribution. So when, you, when you're distributing something that's the original or something that you've modified, what are your rights and obligations? So the two main types of uh, open licensing aspects are non-copyleft and copyleft. Starting with copyleft, this is a permissive non-reciprocal license. Uh, the important point is that it's an open license that does not require derivative works to be shared using the same license. Examples are the CC BY license, MIT, BSD, and the APL 2.0 license. On the other hand, you have copyleft licenses. These are reciprocal or viral licenses. And the idea is that an open license, it's an open license that requires all derivative works to be shared with the same license. So anything downstream of the original uh, code or product needs to be shared using the same license. So in that sense, you're restricted to the same conditions. So examples of that are the CC by SA license, GPL v3, which is really common in the Unix community, and uh, or Linux community, I should say, um, and MPL 2.0. So just a bit more context about these two aspects. What does it mean to require derivative works to be shared with the same license or not? Um, in my context, we make an open source tool and we allow people to fork it freely, make their own adaptations, and then use that for their own purposes. But the moment that they want to share what they've done, features they've added, maybe domain specific um, tools or content, in there, the moment they want to share that with, let's say, their colleagues in the same field or someone else, um, our license is a GPL3, which is a copyleft license, and it governs them. So we've effectively required them to contribute their modifications back to the community. And the idea with that is that um, anything open needs to stay open. So. The good side is that the community benefits, that's the idea. Um, the downside to think about with copyleft is that it means that um, it might actually be a deterrent in some cases from letting people use it for private use because it, it can't go very far without them ob being obligated to openly share it. Uh, on the other hand, copyleft also has the benefit that um, um, let me flip that statement. Non-copyleft, some licenses actually enable people to take your work, make their own version, and technically they could actually sell that version that they modify. So that's something to keep in mind with non-copyleft licenses. There's many things to look at on both sides, but that's kind of the context in which these things are important. So moving on. Um, for In terms of patent clauses, most modern open source software licensings do contain a clause that is designed to prevent people from using patent law to take away open source rights. That's called patent snapback, and it means that the patent rights sort of by default revert to the person who released it. Examples of this are MPL, APL, and GPL v3. Sometimes this isn't applicable in older licenses like MIT and BSD, but I don't think that'll be a concern for people applying licenses here necessarily. 
Um, in terms of how to apply a license, it's actually very simple. If you're using GitHub, which I think this program still is as a default tool, then um, GitHub has a really easy, it's not even a workflow, it's like a prompt when you start a new project to add a license. As you can see from the slide, it's a drop down that you just select what kind of license you want to use. So couldn't be easier to actually apply it on your file. Um, and it's typically in a file called license or license.txt, often all caps. You can just stick it in the main directory of your project and GitHub will do that for you. So also in terms of how to apply a license, Beyond just putting the file in your repository, there are specific instructions you need to follow on certain licenses. Details are available at those links, choosealicense.com, creativecommons.org. Those links will appear again on the last slide, so we'll come back to these resources. Um, also good to know is that you can have multiple licenses within a single project, some for content and some for the actual software part, just as so long as you're clear about which goes on which, and that's typically done in the readme of your project. Um, details uh, on copyleft, non-copyleft, patent, snapback, older um, licenses with no patent clause versus attribution and no attribution is broken down here in this table. Uh, there's, uh, you know, chooseaLicense.com is a great resource for choosing licenses for software. For content, people might gravitate towards the Creative Commons licensing. And then I'm going to put a big caveat at the bottom for data. Some people use CCO. I am not going to go into that today, but I just want to say like from my research context, data licensing and data sharing is very special and very tricky. There are a lot of considerations um, for some of you who might be doing a survey for your project. You might include, want to include participation uh, considerations such as participant consent and the ethics of data sharing if you're collecting data, whether the, your data can be used for commercial purposes or you just want it used for research purposes and what that means. So um, licensing data is a whole other field and I'll leave that sort of out of the scope of today's talk. Uh, if anyone's doing a hardware project just for fun on the side, hardware licenses are also another specialty. So those things are slightly out of the scope today but uh, still definitely relevant domains. So coming to the end, here are some links for further reading. Um, there are some books, there are some guides. Um, and one thing I would advise is that when you're choosing a license, don't go to the Wikipedia page. Uh, yo, this was the meme I was gonna make for you. Don't go to the Wikipedia page. Do actually look around in your community that you're going to release your project into, whether that's the code or the, the program or framework or the data that you're that you're um, working towards. What's the community um, that's going to use it and modify and adapt it and take it further? And what licensing is uh, the norm or common practice there? Because you are also signaling uh, kind of like the values of your project through the licensing that you use and you want to use as much as possible a license that people are comfortable with and uh, conforms with the standards that um, that, that are prevalent in the community that you're actually trying to attract and build with. Okay, and then at the bottom, choose a license. Um, Mozilla Open Leadership actually has its own page on licensing, so they have a nice summary there. And then those links again for chooseaLicense.com, which is kind of like choose your own adventure, explore licensing, and creativecommons.org are great resources for um, getting started on this licensing adventure. So I hope that helps with uh, covering some content for licensing. And that's my talk today.